Okay, we're live. Welcome to the February 8th, 2022 City Council meeting. Roll call, please. Here. Here. Presentations. <clears throat> Proclamation declaring February as Black History Month. I got it. Okay. City of Park, a proclamation declaring Black History Month. Whereas during Black History Month, we celebrate the many achievements and contributions made by African Americans to our economic, cultural, spiritual, and political development. And whereas Black History Month grew out of the establishment in 1926 of Negro, His Negro History Week by Carter G. Woodson and the Association Studies of African American Life and History. And whereas the observance of Black History Month calls our attention. The continued need to battle racism and build society that lives up to its democratic ideal. And whereas the city of Hazel Park continues to work towards becoming an inclusive community in which all citizens, past, present, and future, are respected and recognized their contribution, their potential contribution to our community, the state, the country, and the world. The city of Hazel Park is proud to honor the history and contributions of African Americans in our community throughout our state and across our nation. Now, uh, therefore, be it resolved that the City Council and the City of Hazel Park will proclaim February 2022 to be Black History Month to encourage all citizens to celebrate our diverse heritage and culture and continue our efforts to create a world that is more just, peaceful, and prosperous. Thank you. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, my pleasure also uh, at this time to welcome members of the Hazel Park Historical Commission. I'm, they're going to be our next agenda item. And I want to thank them for the wonderful display that they put on commemorating uh, this event. A resolution commemorating the 80th anniversary of Hazel Park. Whereas in February of 1942, the City of Hazel Park Incorporation process was completed giving official status to growing a unique community known as Hazel Park that was thriving in the southeast corner of Royal Township. And whereas that special community of hardworking citizens had the foresight to understand the benefits of the municipal incorporation, and in the dark days after Pearl Harbor in 1941, looked optimistically to the future and voted to approve Hazel Park's charter laying the groundwork for what would become a fully functioning city with its own history and tradition. And whereas throughout the last eight decades, Hazel Park has been home to tens of thousands of residents, each with their own aspirations and dreams, each with their own unique set of people, places, and times that make up their own memories of Hazel Park. And hopefully, many recalling those memories of Hazel Park with fondness and gratitude. And whereas, Though the built landscape of Hazel Park has changed throughout the decades, the tough, friendly, hardworking character of our city has remained constant. With our strong sense of community helping Hazel Park to weather financial crises, natural disasters, wars, and pandemics, and emerge from those challenges stronger than ever. And whereas, 80 years after incorporation, Hazel Park once again looks optimistically toward the future. Once more, we are a thriving community with new industries creating jobs and wealth, with new educational opportunities for our students, with our outstanding city services, and with a strong sense of inclusion that welcomes all, asking only respect for all in return. So, now therefore be it resolved, the Hazel Park City Council hereby honors and commemorates the 80th anniversary of the City of Hazel Park Incorporation, 
We thank the historical commission for their efforts to publicize our city's history. And we pledge that we'll be good stewards of our city so that future generations may celebrate Hazel Park's founding and perpetuity. Thank you. I'd like to have a motion to adopt this resolution to commemorate the 80th anniversary of Hazel Park. Move to adopt the resolution commemorating the 80th anniversary of Hazel Park. Okay. Discussion? Thank you. I'd like to thank the Historical Commission for doing a great and wonderful job keeping that going. And I would like to present this to the board for their presentation. <laughs> All right, that moves us to the Hazel Park Historical Commission. Please come up and give us a presentation if you like. <coughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I don't know if she's going to be going around. <laughs> I'm just going to stand here and look good. Stand here and make me look better. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Hi, I'm Terry Dirkey, um, board member of the Hazel Park Historical Commission. Chris Garby, another board member, longtime board member, and chairman. Chairman. Uh, we would first like to invite all the council members who haven't already stopped by and the rest of the city to visit the museum February 17th and 19th to be able to see the birthday display. Um, and we would also like to present a birthday card to the uh, council it will be available for your signature and anybody else who wants to sign and we're going to display it in the museum for the duration of the month wonderful awesome. thank, thank you, you. Um, what hour is on the 17th and the 19th um the 17th is thursday and that will be six to eight, six to eight. and <coughs> saturday Saturday the 19th is 10 to 2. Thank you very much. Mr. Mayor, members of council, I had an opportunity to spend some time with the Historical Commission uh, on Saturday and to the display. Uh, so I spent some time with Terry and Dan Dursey and uh, Chris Garrity and uh, Ben Crumb, who I won't be here today, but he was also there. And uh, I want to thank those members for their hard work on the display and all the cool things they're doing over at the museum. So thank you. Very much. Thank you to our Recreation Advisory Board. Mr. Mayor, uh, members of council, as you know, glad to see the historical commission here. We're so happy to welcome the uh, Little Park Recreation Advisory Board. As you know, uh, did vote to have uh, the uh, committees come and make a presentation on a yearly basis. And uh, they're here tonight to make a presentation. They also have some timely, uh, I think, recommendations that they would like to make to the city council. So uh, I would like to invite uh, Celine Papakian and Tina Cadell uh, to the podium. Also, Jared Gajo and John Jones are here uh, as well. They're also members of the uh, Historical Commission. And I'll turn it over to Celine uh, and to Tina. Tina Caudell, our um, amazing recreation advisory board member, and she's here to speak on behalf of the board. And I'm here. Good <laughs> <laughs> council and city staff members. Um, she just introduced me, so you know who I am. I'm going to see you, but it is wonderful to see you in person for a while. Um, at our January meeting, we were talking about the good probability of having a carnival and parade to hopefully return this year. And we discussed all those logistics about that. Um, we, the one in particular was the short name of the parade route where we meet from junior high, go up to Nine Mile to the Tech and then West Mount River Heights to the Nature. The junior high is a great staging place for one thing. Uh, a shorter, shorter distance would be helpful to not only um, those who are walking, they could ride their bikes, that would especially help the band members that are carrying heavier instruments and equipment. And then it's easy enough for the family that lives between eight and nine now to scoot up between nine and River right to find places. There's plenty of parking uh, to bring their families and friends and co-workers or whatever with them. 
kind of would suggest as well. And I think it's a, a real nice viewing place to enjoy it as well. There's a lot of activity in the area. I enjoyed being in the parade at the Alpha My Lions Club. Um, it was a part of also when it was last held. And we did happen to start at the junior high because of the construction of the line on the freeway that came out of it. And I think that it, it worked out well. Um, and in addition, a shorter route helps facilitate the amount of work that's required both by the DPW and our police department not having to monitor a whole other mile road you know, and all these things. You know. So I think it's helpful. Uh, the recreation board did approve having this change for the shorter period at our January 11th meeting and that's uh, even proceeding for the council's consideration. I also want to take our, uh, thank our recreation director, Shereen, for the wonderful work she's been doing and praise her staff for that hard work as well. Uh, that they have done since COVID to keep our programs moving forward. And we close sometimes, and not as close as others, but at least they were kept moving forward. They're not only pleasant to work with, they're very accommodating. Uh, and I've you know, been a part of the rec center for many, many years, for one way or another. And they're always willing to accept some new ideas, uh, to explore things, to do resource for us, and see where we can go in the future. So, you know, that's why you see where we can And I, I support everything she does. Paul, I'm in your elders. <laughs> Thank you, Bobby. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, members of council, I do want to uh, thank the recreation board and for their hard work. And uh, they show up to things uh, when we have special events. I just saw Tina at the uh, winter the, what was it, the blizzard uh, blizzard blast uh, the other weekend, and it was great to see everybody there. And uh, they put in a substantial amount of work. Uh, Tom Jones and uh, Derek Gagel, which the boys also sit on this uh, important advisory committee, and they put in a lot of time off there uh, for recreation events as well. And very generous with their time and expertise. So any questions for anybody that are here? Thank you for your time and service. I appreciate it. Let's move to the uh, civic announcement. We open up specific announcements and specific announcements for the audience. We do have time here. Yeah, we, uh, we mentioned you've been before, but uh, okay. do you, uh, do you have anything to say about the uh, historical museum? I already thanked you and sent you, but uh, we're here now. Uh, and thank you for all that you did. I have a nice picture of Ben and I. And Facebook, I need a step school to stand next to My name is Ben Strong. I'm 1406 I'm the co chair of any of the parks political commission. Um, I would just like to shout out to everybody here and everybody out in the internet world on the video that uh, we are having a birthday celebration all this month. We have other celebrations planned throughout the year, so keep an eye or an ear out and an eye out. Um, and it's been 80 years for Ava Park, so that's a big mark for a city like this. I would say um, we're on the cusp of great things once again. And it was a long, hard road for Ava Park to become a city. If you look into the history of it all. So I think we've done great things, and hopefully, we do a lot more great things. Thank you, everybody, for the opportunity to keep the museum open and going. And uh, I'll see all of you there one day. Thank you. Thank you for everything. You are, you are genuinely appreciated. That's a very Dan and Chris. Any other and, uh, also, I want to recognize uh, Lisa Baldwin came in from the rec board. She was also uh, here as well. So. Any other civic announcements? Thank you. Thank you. announcements from council. The civic announcements opening up public discussion. Anyone from the public out there in the audience like to speak for anything? Come on up to the podium to remain there. Anyone? Any folks? Third time John. <clears throat> Thank you. I'd like to move us on to the consent agenda 1 through 10 on the revised 
I get a motion to uh, move a move approval of the consent agenda items one through ten to board with the, with a presentation from Serene Aki and I'm number eight. Welcome back, Corey. Thank you so much. I didn't know I was going to make a presentation. But, <laughs> well, it's a big deal. Um, essentially, we are just raising our rates. Um, this one is, uh, which one do you want to hear about? That the grant. Of the grant. Oh, my apologies. Uh, this is just a resolution essentially stating that we will give the money if we are to win grant from Oakland County Parks, which I certainly hope we do, um, but just being able to say that we will provide the money. Um, the grant at large, we are applying for 62,000, but only Hazel Park would match 17,000, or 16,000, excuse me. So we're saying that we will do that if we win it. It's a big deal. Talk it up some more. Well, it's my first year applying to this grant. It's the first year Oakland County Parks has had this grant, or the, the Parks Commission has put it forward to the uh, city, towns, and villages in Oakland County. And I just took the initiative. I look at baseball diamond number one every day and Anchors Park, and I know how utilized it is by our community. And um, even basic infrastructure improvements cost a lot for any city, let alone our city and our department. So just, I applied for three bleachers and um, the scoreboard to be renovated. And I thought that may be um, something that- A big city improvement okay. there would make those bleachers work. Yeah, I considered our financial situation as a city. I didn't over um, shoot to see a matching amount, and I just kind of applied for it when I saw it. And you did a good job in the application, and that's the, I don't even know if you're aware of this or not, uh, but I did have a chance to meet with uh, County Commissioner Jerry McGillivray, who is based on the district, and he's elected to the uh, next county commissioner, and uh, he is the chair of the committee that hands out those grants, and he's very supportive of that grant. So my fingers are crossed that uh, we'll be very successful on that, and that we're going to, I told him how uh, pleased we have been with the level of support that we received from County Parks, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, we want to continue to uh, build that relationship and get as many services and as much programs as we can. So I had a conversation with Mr. McGilvery last week, and that's great and they've been nothing but supportive um just from the last uh, event that we had uh, the blizzards last we had 200 attendees and even for oakland county that was impressive and that was their number um so you know i'm impressed with that as well and it was really something to see um people coming down from the flat hill coming to the event going to the playground it was awesome it was a good event and we had snow which helped yeah. <laughs> That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Motion passed on the consent agenda. Move to the administrative reports. Over here. What is uh, to amend HPMC PS 13.04 water supply system second reading? Mayor, we are requesting you approve this in second reading. Discuss this in first reading. I'll move, approval. <clears throat> I'll move approval of the request to amend ordinance 13.04.140 to raise the interest rate to 3% on past due water bill balance. Or, any more discussion? Uh, I, I have a question for the sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, so in the report that you gave us, um, it's currently at one percent, but it also says that we are not, we haven't in the past utilized that one percent. Is there a reason why we're not seeking to use that one percent first and just jump into three percent? Well, I checked around with other cities, Warren, and you know, we ran the numbers one percent tonight, and we're trying to do it. Again, I 
I don't endorse, I don't, I do not personally support uh, penalizing people that are already having to be All right, thank you so much. Roll call vote, please, on the other one. Councilmember Lapierre? Yes. Councilmember Lava? Yes. Mayor Burke on the call? Yes. Councilmember Bowman? No. Mayor Webb? Yes. Motion passes. Orders to amend HPM uh, CH 12.5. Street maintenance parking regulations first. Yes, it's more, um, this formalizes our authority to write street maintenance tickets to people who have parked in their yard rather than having to write the much larger uh, vehicle storage ticket. So we want to incentivize people to get their uh, vehicles off the road. We don't want to incentivize them to leave them on. So uh, we charge it the same amount. Uh, now we'll still write the vehicle storage ticket if uh, the Vehicle is left there in the yard on a prolonged basis and that constitutes storage. But I think creating this modification is more fair for everyone involved. Council? I have a question. Uh, for people that have been written a storage ticket that has yet to have that uh, adjudicated by probate or whatever, are we going to be able to cancel those? I don't think we have them outstanding and we can't go back at the time. So that's kind of uh, one of the Unfortunate hallmarks of the American jurisprudence system. Well, we can look at, you know, uh, take that into consideration if it's appealed, but we can't go back. And... Well, we have, we actually have been looking at the circumstances on a case to case basis, and everyone is addressed on those um, facts and circumstances. There's been, <clears throat> excuse me, tickets that have been under these circumstances, <clears throat> and, and when they were treated this way. If they were appealed. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Motion on this. I'd like to uh, make a motion to uh, amend Title 12, Street Sidewalk and Public Safety, Chapter 50, Street Maintenance Section 2550, 10, Street Maintenance, Parking Regulations to Allow Enforcement for Vehicle Park, Injury, and Street Maintenance. Support. Any discussion? Discussion? I just want to say that I really appreciate the Thank you. 
responsible party agent in the notice provision under the ordinance. Support. <laughs> that was a long way. It was a little oh, thorough. That is the motion that we've had. That is the longest motion in, I think, in the history of oh, ever done this. Well, we do. I was there. We saw it through. <laughs> Andy, does that do any more discussion? <clears throat> Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, this, uh, Council Member Longo, Longo can go if he wishes, but in a summary, what this does is it uh, amends the uh, human rights ordinance, prohibits conversion therapy, and also prohibits the uh, capitalization of uh, being a member of the LGBTQ community. I move adoption of an ordinance to amend Title 18, Human Rights. The City of Hazel Park Municipal Code of Ordinances at Chapter 18.03, Prohibition of Conversion Therapy, Sections 18.03.010 through 18.03.090, and to provide penalties to violence. Support. Any more discussion? Suspension? Cancel. That was a quick and concise motion. Yes, it was. No cause hearing on 118 West Bernard. Do you want to hear representing 118 West Bernard? There's no one here, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to open up. Anyone no wish to speak on this? I don't want to speak on this property. So no one wish to close the public hearing. Mr. Mayor, this uh, property is substantially dilapidated, and we recommend uh, the following motion based upon recommendation of the building official. The concern of public health, safety, and welfare to the Hazel Park community and for reasons indicated by a building official it is recommended that the city council affirm the hearing officer's order to demolish the structures on the real property known as 118 West Bernard Avenue. And the administration respectfully requests uh, that. I'd like to make a motion that, uh, based on the recommendation of the building official, uh, the concern to public health, safety, and welfare to the Hazel Park community. And for the reasons indicated above, it is recommended to the city of that the city council affirm the hearing. Did you read the wrong thing? <laughs> you started it. It, um, <laughs> it's kind of good. All you need to do is say so moved after what I said. So moved. <laughs> Any more discussion, comments, attention? Uh, board's commissions. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, pursuant to the annual terms of office for the board of review. Uh, the administration respectfully requests the appointment of Gary Harrison, Mike Mazzucchelli, and uh, Ryan Nagy. Okay. Uh, we got to have them because they're starting. Uh, so they need to. What's that? What do you need to approve? You have to approve it. They got to be approved. So, yeah, just so we get a motion from somebody. I move uh, reappointment of Gary Harrison, Mike Mazzucchelli, and Ronnie. Support. Discussion? Uh, start looking. Uh, Mike Mazzucchelli has been a wonderful board member of this uh, program for many years. He has signaled uh, his desire to leave the board for the past two or three years and keep asking him to say this is a very important board to meet for long periods of time. You really need to have uh, you know something to, to give a lot of thought to these three individuals have been just fantastic over the past few years. So we're very grateful to them for continuing to serve. This is a this is a big time commitment and it's a lot of work. And uh, I hope that we can convince him to keep going for another couple of years. Uh, but we're gonna have to start thinking about it. We certainly don't look like an income. So, thank you. Uh, also, for boards and commissions, uh, since we have them all here tonight, the administration will recommend the appointment of uh, Tom Jones, Tina Cottell, and Jared Gabriel for the recommendation. Okay. I'll make a motion uh, to reappoint Tom Jones, Tina Cottell, and Jared Gabriel. Okay. More discussion, additions. We don't think I don't think this is up. Yes, it's, is he is it, is it, is it all enough to do? I don't know. No. Okay. 
Yeah. Okay. And again, they do a fantastic job. Mr. Klobuchar. Yes. Please come to the podium at the microphone. Here, hang on the phone interview. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a 20 year review, sir. <laughs> This is a proclamation honoring Edward Klobuchar's career as city manager for the last 20 years in Hazel Park and his volunteerism. Whereas Edward George Klobuchar, a lifelong resident of Hazel Park, began his involvement with the city government before he graduated high school, working for the Hazel Park Rec Department as part time sports official and program supervisor. And whereas after leaving the Recreation Department, Mr. Klobuchar continued to be involved with the city as a volunteer, serving on several municipal boards and commissions. He also served as the Park's Reserve Auxiliary Police Officer for 10 years, rising to the rank of Auxiliary Lieutenant and earning several commendations for his service as. And whereas Mr. Klobuchar returned to the city of Hazel Park in 2000, serving as special projects coordinator, assistant city manager, and acting city clerk prior to his appointment as city manager. And whereas Mr. Klobuchar was appointed city manager of Hazel Park in February of 2002, a full time for the turbulent time for the city during the last, during his 20 year tenure. As city manager, Mr. Klobuchar guided Hazel Park through several budget crises and worked tirelessly to lay the foundation for the city's ongoing renaissance. Mr. Kovacir is an enthusiastic involver, an innovator who has contributed immensely to making Hazel Park a dynamic community. Frankly, has accomplished, his accomplishments are too long to list. Whereas Mr. Kovacir has consistently enhanced his leadership, leadership skills through continuing education in 2006, Mr. Kovacir earned a highly competitive Calvin fellowship to attend the complete and complete the senior executive in executives and state and local government program at Harvard University's Kennedy School of Government. He also attended Saginaw Valley's state certified public managers program and received the George C. Askew award for his capstone project. Further, Mr. Kovacir is a graduate of the FBI Citizens Academy and whereas while serving as city manager, Mr. Kovacir still finds time to volunteer for numerous boards and committees and advocate an advocate for the interests of the park. Mr. Kovacir served as a gubernatorial appointee to the Michigan Board of Psychology from 2002 to 2006. He was elected president of the Michigan Suburbs Alliance and was a member of the Michigan Municipal League Board of Directors from 2013 to 2016. Mr. Klobuchar also was a member of the Michigan's Treasury Task Force and Municipal Finance Reform in 2013. Importantly, Mr. Klobuchar was appointed by the Michigan, State, Michigan Senate Majority Leader to serve on the Hazel Park Promise Zone Board of Directors. He is a guest lecturer on municipal finance and student at the University of Michigan, Wayne State University, and Saginaw Valley University. Whereas Mr. Kovacs' record of public service is unmatched in the history of Hazel Park. He has served Hazel Park with honor, great distinction, forming close bonds with the residents and business owners of his community. During his tenure as he the first longest serving city manager, Mr. Klobuchar demonstrated unique dedication, preservation, preserving through much adversity. He served as a mentor to many and contributes positivity and professional development of those around him. So therefore be resolved, I, the mayor, Michael Glass, on behalf of the city council, the city employees, the citizens of Hazel Park, do hereby extend our sincere appreciation, deep gratitude for Edward Klobuchar's 20 years 
a faithful and outstanding service, which undoubtedly has contributed to the betterment of our city. Look, I just want to say that serving as city manager for the past 20 years has been uh, one of the great honors of my life. And uh, I want to thank nobody uh, served the term that long uh, on their own. And I want to thank uh, the, the, the members of uh, council that I've served with. I want to thank the outstanding department heads and employees that uh, I've had the privilege to work with throughout the years. I want to thank the residents of Hazel Park who always answered the call in the darkest hours uh, of this city and passed millages when we need to. Uh, and those millages laid the groundwork for the success that we're having today. So, uh, like I said, this is, uh, having served in this position is one of the great honors of my life. Uh, I've served the city of Hazel Park in some capacity or another since, uh, as the mayor said, since I was in high school. And uh, even after my term as city manager is over, I will probably still stay uh, involved in the future. So uh, again, like I said, I, I am humble. Uh, I have to thank uh, my wonderful employees, so many of whom uh, are here tonight. I, I am truly blessed with uh, the best department heads in the state of Michigan. I say it uh, often because I can't say it enough. And uh, I also want to thank you, five members of City Council. Truly, it is a pleasure uh, working for you five. Uh, some of my colleagues have absolute horror stories uh, for some of the crazy elected officials that they have to work for and have worked for in the past. And I've got to say that uh, I'm working with, uh, you know, five very professional people who have the best interest in the city of Mason Park uh, at heart. And uh, again, I'm very grateful for this resolution. I will uh, treasure it. And like I said, uh, being here has been one of the big honors of my life. And I would be remiss if I didn't uh, thank my wife, Diane, who has uh, put up with this whole crazy job that I've had uh, for you know the past 20 years plus of being part of the city of Hazel Park. And uh, I appreciate the sacrifices that she's made. Uh, that my stepkids made uh, when they were growing up uh, with my absences and things like that and how they were always willing to pitch in and volunteer whether they really wanted to or not when we had uh, some things to, uh, to do. And uh, I want to let them know back at home that I couldn't have done it without them either. Thank you all. I look forward to seeing to serve you for a few more years. Let's make some great things happen for the city of Hazel Park. Thank you. <laughs> uh, communications from the department heads. Does anyone wish to come up and speak? Or I'll jump in one. Welcome, Tim. I'll speak to follow me. I'll do my best. Um, <clears throat> just on uh, Monday, the, uh, back in September, we had discussed about a uh, service on one two program. And the NLT, um, you know, COVID and delays and holiday season. Uh, they were a little slow of getting the information together. They have completed it. They notified me they're going to start sending out information uh, later this month, but we'll be fine. We're going to put that on social media just to give people more heads up when they receive this uh, information in the mail that uh, the city is behind this program and uh, we will we'll do well to do that. Just a simple FYI, because we, like I said, I didn't have a chance to put that into the packet. I appreciate that you've uh, done this research uh, and brought this to the city because 
I am currently dealing with this issue. <laughs> uh, so I mean, it's a little funny. Um, but yes, and it's a very, very interesting issue. Luckily, uh, initially they thought the break was on your mind. I appreciate you, you doing this, Barbara. Yeah, I think like just making sure that somebody trusted. Right. Is the, is the tough one. Do you have any estimates of the premium? No, I don't. I think it's like that eight dollars a month. Eight dollars a month. Yeah. I think so. I think we should put that on every resident. <laughs> <laughs> well, they don't do anything through the city, so we all see that eight. So, yeah, well, you know, we'll get the word out. We'll bucks. Have. That's not bad. Yeah. The cover you were is one big event. You spent more than that. I will tell you my experience with Berkeley, and um, this program has been that utilized in Berkeley, and people have really great success with it. Like, yeah, they are so glad to take part of it. So. Yeah, I've been talking with Derek Schuler in Berkeley. Yeah, it's been great help and letting me know what we need to know about the group and mm -hmm. how it works. And the city's, uh, you know, it is not a city program, but it's something that they put out and, uh, and it has worked. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tim. And then I want to do a uh, uh, discussion of uh, our workers here in, in the city, our city manager. Congratulations. That's a long time. Actually, you uh, interviewed me uh, way back when, uh, at uh, that time ago. I've hired every one of you. <laughs> That's a long time. Uh, I wanted to uh, give a, a real special thank you to a few of my coworkers, my crew members that uh, uh, have really, really gone above and beyond what we do. Uh, Scott Reese, Michael Booker. And Rick Kaplan, this past month has been uh, just a bear. Uh, Scott, for instance, put in over 20 straight work days, day and night, working on water main repairs, uh, frozen pipe issues and such. Michael Booker came in a cold second under 15 days, and Rick uh, pulled off 12 with a day between six. Uh, these gentlemen worked tirelessly uh, to keep the system going. They answer the phone, they're on, on site within half hour, 45 minutes, and taking care of business. And just want to make sure that this doesn't go unnoticed uh, out there. It's been miserable cold, extremely cold. And uh, tonight, I'm hoping they're just sitting at home with their feet off the track and having a hot chocolate and a nice meal. So, so yeah, it's tomorrow morning for everybody again. Um, but if you see any of my guys in passing, please thank them. And uh, I think they really much would appreciate that. Any other uh, city managers? Oh, sorry. Any other? Uh, <laughs> any other department heads? I just want to. See. <laughs> well, there, there may be a future one. You turn this into a roast. <laughs> Anybody else have anything from their departments to bring up? Gary, you're usually not here. Do you have anything to bring up? <laughs> Uh, I have time to bring up one thing. Okay. Yeah, just wait for me. Come on, take the one for the side. Read the copy. Um, we are looking to increase our, our freight fees uh, at this meeting, hopefully. Yeah, they approve all. Um, oh, oh, very good. So the reason being just because um, we are far, the, the pricing is archaic compared to all of our neighbors. Um, my wonderful employee, Amanda Taylor, who should get a shout out as well, pulled all of the numbers from the neighboring um, communities, looked at their park rentals, how they did it, whether it was in a block or not, and so forth, block rate, and cars just didn't even compare. So here we are raising the rates, and I think that's a benefit to everyone. So thanks for approving. Thank you. Anyone else? We will close the department head discussion here. Move on to the city attorney. Alyssa, happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Let's all say happy birthday to you. <laughs> there we go. We got you. Got you smile more. You said you needed a smile when you came out. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to congratulate. Um, 
for 20 years of wonderful service. Not only do I work here, but I live here and I've been here for a very, very long time. And it's really, really wonderful to see how Viva Park has been managed and how it's been going stronger and stronger even during the tough times. I'm so proud to live here and I'm so proud to work with all of you and to serve our community. We truly are the stewards of our community. And Ed, you are an amazing mentor and manager and leader. And it's your guidance and support that helps all of us to be the best we can be to do our job to serve the community that we all love so much. So thank you very much, Ed. Thank you. And thank you, Diane, for putting up with all of us. <laughs> thank you. Mr. Fulminger. You know, I, I, I don't know what I can add, but I looked at that card and, you know, I read all your comments and I thank you very much. And I read uh, Andy's little handwritten note that he wrote me and he talked about 20 years ago and who knew that it was gone like this when I was hired. And it was uh, a very contentious time in the city of Hazel Park and uh, three public officials made a brave choice. And uh, again, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for, uh, you know, any of the girl, Mike Webb and Jack Lloyd making that tough decision back in 2002. And uh, I'll never forget any of you. And I will always remember the confidence that you had in me. And I thank you for that. And when you didn't have it yourself. This is called what you did once job. He's forgetting that part. Oh, it's a, <laughs> forgive my language. Being the manager at Cable Park was somewhat of a shit show. <laughs> uh, there were between Dan Potter, who served for 13 years and was a previous record holder, and uh, myself. There were nine different individuals that it was a hot manager, uh, either active, acting, or permanent to the game. And it was, it was a hot seat. you know, I, I figured, you know, come in, I would stabilize things, put the ship right, and then. Go back on what you know my intended career trajectory was. I'm glad that I stayed because, like I said, it was the honor of my life, and it's been one of the most fulfilling jobs that anybody could ever have. I always had a lifetime commitment to the city, and uh, again, I'm grateful that I've been able to serve it in the way that I have. Been. So, thank you all. Thank you. That takes us to uh, Mr. Person. I wanted to thank you for her birthday. Um, I'm going to forget about your birthday, so thank you so much for being here on your birthday. I hope it was wonderful. Um, I want to thank our historical commissioners for coming out tonight and for planning this year's celebration for the 80th birthday of Hazel Park. Um, I want to congratulate again our city manager on 20 years of service. Um, that proclamation was long, but your service to this city was longer. So, you know, there's only so much that we can condense. To, to really kind of call out the great things that you've done for the city. So thank you so much for your um, your patience and then your not patience sometimes. Um, <laughs> I know we sometimes butt heads, but um, it makes for, I think, um, better communication and it really benefits our city to have um, such a dry appetite. So thank you so much for that. Um, I also wanted to thank the city for recognizing Black History Month. And I wanted to um, let everybody know that our historical commission is also hosting a, um, a virtual Black History Month event with um, Quinn Wright, who was um, historically appointed to Madison Heights this year City Council. Um, that's February 24th, 6 p.m. The event is on Facebook, um, so check that out. Um, and then I also wanted to thank all of our departments for really um, buckling down during this cold February, cold January that we had. Um, really coming to task and meeting the challenges that we always experience this time of year, but we still are surprised by every season. Um, and really thank our community for um, taking care of each other, looking out for each other, shoveling their walks, um, and, and checking on neighbors. Just don't forget to check on your neighbors, um, especially in these cold Then everybody stay safe, drive slow, and uh, look out for each other. Thank you. Councilman Lando, happy birthday, Melissa. Uh, I'd like to recognize Tom and his team uh, for our snow emergency. Uh, the roads were quickly plowed. Uh, there was a lot of really, really excellent communication from our city staff to residents and uh, consistently. And I think it's just all of us, we all got really great feedback from our residents of how well everything was handled. So I just want to thank you and your team. Uh, Ed, uh, you have been city manager for more than half of my life. Which is absolutely amazing. Uh, 
property manager for more than a third of my life. <laughs> <laughs> to, uh, to have 20 years of service uh, in anything, let alone to a community that is only four times that old, uh, honestly remarkable, and you gave a lot of deference and credit to your staff. Uh, who you hired and who your staff is ultimately a reflection of you. And I just want to thank you for all you've done for the city and honestly, in my very short tenure, uh, you've been a remarkable just colleague and friend and I'm just really just grateful for your presence here. Uh, it makes my life a lot easier. Um, Jimmy uh, has been quietly but very diligently putting minutes uh, from all of our past council meetings in the past several years onto the city website. And to make sure that he knows that that has not gone unnoticed. And I just really want to shout him out for uh, that increased level of transparency to our residents and to the community. And then lastly, if you blinked and missed it, uh, tonight we did pass a conversion therapy plan. And the fact that it was so chill and didn't have a whole lot of comment really is a reflection of our community's welcoming and inclusive attitude towards the LGBTQ community. Uh, I did want to call out two different parts in the ordinance. And it's, uh, one, that being lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, or queer is not a disease, disorder, illness, deficiency, or shortcoming. And that the city has a compelling interest in protecting the physical and psychological well being of LGBTQ minors by protecting them from conversion therapy in the city and limiting the risk of harms caused by exposure to conversion therapy. In the state of Michigan, there are, are only uh, five communities currently that have a human rights ordinance as well as a prohibition on conversion therapy. I'm very proud that uh, the home of two residents who helped achieve same sex marriage nationwide are going to become the, the city community. And additionally, I'd like to mention that I wish that this was completely unnecessary because there are bills in the Michigan House and Senate uh, that would amend the Elliott Larson Civil Rights Act to uh, provide anti discrimination protection for the LGBTQ community, uh, as well as prohibit conversion therapy. And as always, I converse, encourage everyone to harass their legislators to do the right thing by our residents. Okay. Nothing we care. Yeah. <clears throat> I just want to echo all the sentiments. Happy birthday, Mary. Uh, congratulations, Ed. Part of what I had said, who would have imagined what lay ahead of us 20 years ago? And I believe it's the Grateful Dead. What a long, strange trip it's been. Um, and it's for sure. <laughs> you know, there's things that, you know, been too many things to list. You know, we knew it was bad. What we didn't know was how bad it was until we got the auditors in here and really, yeah. you know, it was really bad. And we, we looked at People may not know this, and we would not remember this, but they were going to attempt to recall us for having fired the city manager and put you in. They started recall, and it didn't go anywhere. We, they all found out we were righter than we thought. We were. So anyway, thank you to all of the staff, everybody that's helped make this a, a surprise for Ed, and uh, and for all your hard work throughout the years. Um, I ended the message to Ed is much love Ed. So I'll end this with okay. the words of Tom Selman. If you love somebody, tell them. If you have children, hug them every day and tell them. Well, thank you for coming out. Thank you. Uh, I too would like to echo uh, all those sentiments. Um, happy birthday, Melissa. Um, and uh, congratulations, Ed. 20 long years. <laughs> uh, answered several more. Right? Several. Few. Few. Some. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, I have to agree with Luke um, on, because in my opinion, uh, if you go somewhere and you have bad customer service, it's from there. Um, and one of the things that residents tell us all the time is how helpful. Uh, all city employees are uh, and you know friendly and they'll stop to help um, and I think that comes from top. So I would like to thank everyone um, for all their hard work and but, um, put together a very good team. So thank you. Thank you. I'd like to 
say thank you to all of our administration for doing the hard work, being professional, and caring, and passing it on to your staff underneath. It shows all across the board. And we do hear it all the time. How nice and sincere the police, the fire, the DW, water, and even in the city clerk's office as well, and other departments. We hear how nice we have, you know, everybody, for years, we always heard bad comments. Oh, they were so nice. Well, sometimes some people make it that way. Our city employees are here every day. They work hard, they strive to do the job. And that's a tribute. Because you know how hard it is to do the same job every day. We've all been there. We try to make the best of it. And we do the best job we can and be as nice as you can as professionals. And that's what, that's what I think good leadership brings across the board. Thank you. Along with that, I'd like to say this closure has been a long trip. Again, it's amazing. I think back 20 years ago, and we go, what are we in for here? We knew there was a problem. And we started investigating and investigating. We spent Every hour after work, going home, going to that five years of law records, of everything that transpired the five years prior to us getting elected, to find out that the city manager at the time and uh, the mayor at the time and other people were involved in purchasing a million dollars worth of property that was out of contingency of the board of people. And I thought that was 100% wrong. Uh, without having people speak on behalf of that, and left the city in a lurch of millions of dollars, shortchanging a pension fund, and doing other things just to name a few. And then when we got in, and we fired the, the former city manager, appointed Mr. Kovacher, we were uh, like putting the pressure on him. You gotta take this job. You gotta take it. He goes, no, I don't want it. So we're right in. We kept this, you know. So we put some more pressure on him. Temporarily. Yeah. So we had a bunch of residents come up here to the podium. I don't know, 20, 30, maybe 50 inches, how long it was. Reading long speeches of why Mr. Kovacher should be our city manager. It says the homegrown kid that started out here in high school being politically active and moving forward and making strides to better his community. And why we need a, a homegrown person here to see how we all feel as his apartment. And it's the truth. You, got, you don't know how it feels unless you live here. So we got hiring outside city managers isn't always the answer. And this closure made the best and showed us up. And 20 years later, he's made us all proud of how far, far he's brought our city as speaking to us and giving us direction and what direction we should take to better our community and economic development status and uh, pursuing different types of businesses, uh, making, getting our home values back together. And we come up with different strategies at many times. Andy and him and I would strategize on how we're gonna redevelop this and try to help spur this economic growth, you know, and come up with different scenarios. And Ed would take it back to his staff and they would brainstorm and all of a sudden, here they go, and they come up with this fabulous idea. And it's worked out many times. And I'd like to say thank you for that commitment. And it's been a pleasure to be your friend. And I feel the same way about you. It, 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 we've known each other for uh, 30 years, at least 30 years. And, uh, you know, we've, uh, we've been through some battles and hardships together. And uh, again, as I said, I appreciate uh, your friendship. And uh, again, I'm looking forward uh, to working with you all. Let's uh, make these next few years some great few years. And uh, I did want to bring up one thing you mentioned earlier. It is hard on your kids. You know, you and Diane had Diane's kids, and oh, yeah. they were smaller, and this is hard on the children. And then you, you, you know, every state, and Morgan, you raised them while you were involved in politics. And I think that you bring up a point that uh, 
think a lot of people miss that when you take one of these positions, you're really on cross 147. Yeah. Your life is not your own. And uh, it, uh, it, it really can uh, take a toll uh, on your family. I'm lucky, I'm blessed. Everybody has been very supportive. Right? And I know the sacrifices that they made. That's why I had to remember to thank Diana, Michael and Gina, uh, because it, it wasn't always easy. And there was a lot of times I wasn't there. Same here. Many times I would be gone in the meeting. It's been, you know, COVID's actually been kind of a little relief for us to have a little more time at home. So we do a lot of emailing back and forth and text and uh, conversation that way. I did want to point that out. That was very important. So thank you. Uh, it is, I just want to say thank you to my family as well for cutting, cutting up a couple of years of uh, not being home for certain things. Uh, and uh, I'd like to thank Diane for putting up with uh, all of us. Uh, Absorbing your time. So, and uh, I have a motion to adjourn. Um, to vote.